Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and I heard what happened with the Southern Poverty Law Center today. One of the co-founders, Morris Dees, has been ousted. Mm, and they're kind of tight-lipped about why. They're not really saying exactly what the deal is, but... Hmm, it's looking like probably the things that he's been accusing other people of for a long time are things that he's guilty of doing. Wow, where have we heard that before? Oh, psychological projection, right? Hmm, accusing other people of things you yourself are doing. And the Democrats and the people on the left seem to be very, very good at doing this. Well, anyway, the Southern Poverty Law Center said Thursday that it had fired its co-founder and chief trial lawyer, Morris Dees. Now, this was not today. Obviously, I'm doing this on the 18th, but this is when I heard about it. So, sorry. <laughs> After nearly a half century, during which he helped build the organization into a fearsome powerhouse that focused on hate crimes and with an endowment that approached half a billion dollars. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to read a lot of these articles. I'm just going to give you the brief overview of them. And I will put the links down below in case you want to read them for yourself. But yeah, they fired him. Here's the one from the Los Angeles Times. And yep. They fired the guy. It's very interesting to see that, that they took him out. I mean, they're saying unspecified misconduct. Yeah, unspecified misconduct. That's the reason. Well, it has to do with a lot more than that. There was a letter signed by two dozen employees and sent to management and board of directors before news broke of Dee's firing said they were concerned that internal allegations of mistreatment, sexual harassment, gender discrimination, and racism threatened the moral authority of this organization and our integrity along with it. Okay, got news for you here, folks. If you don't know what the Southern Poverty Law Center is, they have no moral authority or integrity. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Look at this. In an internal email to the organization's legal department announcing her departure last Friday, a black attorney suggested the center needed to create a more inclusive work environment. Now, remember, these people are the ones who are pointing their finger at everybody else for being hate groups, okay, and that they're not doing what they should be doing. And she said, as a woman of color, the experiences of staff of color and female staff have been particularly important to me. And we recognize that there is more work to do in the legal department and across the organization to ensure that SPLC is a place where everyone is heard and respected and where the values we are committed to pursuing externally are also being practiced internally, she wrote. Well, mm -hmm, yeah, right. This has actually been a problem for them for a long time, if anybody knows about them. They may have started out with good intentions, but whew, boy, they don't have it anymore. If you know anything about them now, this is a statement. The chickens have had a very long trip, but they finally came home to roost. <laughs> This is one of the guys that was talking here. And he was talking about Morris, who is also one of the founders, I believe, is a flimflam man. And he's managed to flimflam his way along for many years, raising money by telling people about the KKK and hate groups. He said he sort of goes to whatever will sell and has, of course, brought in millions and millions and millions of dollars. And this is really interesting down here. It says, it's remarkable how many people who have worked at the center have not spoken very well of the center after they left. So yeah, there's been complaints about race discrimination and sexual harassment from the center's former attorneys and interns. Hmm, very interesting, huh? Those who have been around for a while know about this organization. And if I'm not mistaken, right now, they are one of uh, Facebook's sources, I believe, and possibly also YouTube sources for the truth that they look to. They are one of the organizations that are consulted 
about whether something is valid or not. Is it fake news or is it not fake news? Well, they decided that they needed someone outside of the organization to come in and to do an investigation to find out if these attitudes are widespread or not. Well, guess who they hired? Check it out. Yeah, Southern Poverty Law Center picks former Michelle Obama aide to investigate workplace complaints. <laughs> Do you really think there's going to be any investigation done? Do you think it's going to turn up any real significant issues? Oh, I think not. <laughs> there she is. And so she is Michelle Obama's former chief of staff to lead a top to bottom examination of its workplace culture. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's see what happens. You know, I just don't have a whole lot of faith with somebody who is part of Obama's administration because they certainly didn't police themselves. So I don't think she's going to be doing much policing there. I would be very surprised if she points out anything at all. Anyway, but there's some history of the SPLC, and this is from the Washington Times. Back in August and September of 2017, the SPLC was caught transferring millions to offshore tax havens. Yep, they were, they were. Ooh, I mean, you got to ask yourself, why in the world do they have that much money in the first place? The SPLC holds $328 million in net assets and raised more than $50 million in contributions in 2015, despite spending just $61,000 on legal services. They're the Southern Poverty Law Center. Isn't that what they're supposed to be spending their money on? Law? and legal proceedings, but how much? Oh no, $61,000. That's all they spent, but they had $328 million in net assets. Yes, folks, this is a nonprofit organization, so they're not paying taxes on this. Hmm, it's a totally fake organization, said Fox News host T Tucker Carlson in a Thursday night segment. I'm going to show you just a little bit of that clip, but I'll put the whole thing down below so you'll be able to look at it yourself. And this article really from the Washington Times was based on this article by the Free Beacon, the Washington Free Beacon. This was the original one, and it came out on the 31st of August of 2017. And if you go through and read this, it just is like, it'll make you mad. It really will, because there's so much that they have been, look, they got $102,000 cash transfer on December 24th, 2014 to this Cayman Limited account in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. Okay. If this is a nonprofit organization, why in the world do they have that much money? And why in the world are they shipping it to some kind of offshore account in the Cayman Islands? You gotta wonder. I mean, really. Yeah, you have to read this article right here. It seems extremely unusual for a 501c3 concentrating upon reducing poverty in the American South to have multiple bank accounts in tax haven nations. Yeah, you think? Oh, it just, again, you need to read it, but it'll really make you upset when you do because it's just incredible, this whole thing. Oh, yes, that's the way it works with nonprofits. Anyway, I'm going to play a clip now from this. It's not the whole thing, but I will put the link down below so you can watch the entire video. It's a little confusing when you look at these numbers. $328 million in net assets. <laughs> yeah. Why would the Southern Poverty Law Center amass more than a quarter billion dollars? They make all their money it's from, it's from the hate industry. They What they do is, in the 1970s, they served a legitimate purpose. They, they won a lot of landmark civil lawsuits for civil rights. And flash forward to today, you have them, they swing far left. They're known for the hate map, as you know, which contains conservative groups, mainstream conservative groups, along with 
actual racists like the KKK. And this turned into a windfall for them. Their, uh, their leadership, uh, the top people in management, they average probably around $300,000 in pay. $328 million? I mean, if you really care about making America a better place, why wouldn't you give that money to the dispossessed or marginalized communities of color, the ones they're always talking about? Another great question. Okay. They only spend 61000 in litigation as well, being a law center. Yeah, it's a totally fake organization. So thanks for your reporting on that. Thank you. Yeah, so that's just kind of recapping it. And if you think they're still a valid organization, non-profit organization after all that, I just don't see how they can be. And I don't understand why they haven't been stripped of that. Well, probably for the same reason that like the Clinton Foundation hasn't been, right? Anyway, this is their hate map. Oh, in 2018, we tracked 1,020 hate groups across the United States. Now, keep in mind, this is what they do. This is how they raise their money, okay? Their money comes in because they are fighting the good fight against hate groups. But the thing is, they are not. See, they're making a lot of this. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some hate groups in the United States. There certainly are. But if there were not any hate groups, this organization would cease to exist. So it's in their best interest to make sure people are aware there's hate groups out there and to make it up. Because sometimes they have done that in the past. And this article right here, the Southern Poverty Law Center has lost all credibility. This is from back in 2018, June 22nd, 2018. And essentially, this guy right here, they accused him of hate speech or of being a hateful person or whatever. And he, they said that he was anti-Muslim. He is Muslim. OK, <laughs> he really is. He's a Muslim. But what he was trying to decry were Muslims that were extremists who were causing terrorism issues. So look at what it says here. The SPLC is a once storied organization that did important work filing civil lawsuits against the KKK in the 70s. But it has become a caricature of itself, labeling virtually anyone who does not fall in line with its left wing ideology an extremist or hate group. So if you wonder where it's coming from, this organization is doing a lot to push that narrative. And so anyone who disagrees with the left, they promote as bigots or racist or hate speech. And that's the whole point of it. This is why you will see a lot of people who who say that Trump is a na white nationalist and everything. It, this group right here is promoting that, even though it's not true at all. And I'm going to show you this article on Conservapedia. If you want to read more about the real truth about the Southern Poverty Law Center, this is a very good article to go through and read because it gives a list of the things that they've been doing. And it was founded by Morris Dees and Joe Levin. And its first president was civil rights leader Julian Bond. And so it's it's got roots in some of the more, shall I say, militant uh, type things on the left. And so they really have uh, taken on a lot of people like the homosexual agenda. They're very harsh against anyone who stands against that. And like, for instance, D. James Kennedy is one ministry down in Florida that has been a big ministry and they've been standing against homosexuality for years. Oh, yeah, they're on the list. So there are a lot of groups that are not necessarily hate groups that are on there. There may be some legitimate ones, but most of them are not. And if you look here, the last year that the Better Business Bureau's Philanthropic Advisory Service reported on the SPLC in 1994, Dees and then Executive Director Edward Ashworth took home over $150,000 each, and the organization then possessed over $62 million in assets. It now controls over $200 million, and Dees pulls $286,000 in salary. 
Remember, this is a nonprofit organization. In 2000, SPLC fundraised $27 million and made an additional $17 million from investments, but spent only $13 million on its civil rights program. So, and it's no longer listed in the Better Business Bureau's Wise Giving Alliance because that would require that at least 50% of total income from all sources should be applied to programs and activities directly related to the purposes for which the organization exists. The SPLC spent 89% of its total income on fundraising and administrative costs. I mean, that's just horrible. So anyway, I'll leave this down below. Here's some of the hate groups, though, that I wanted to show you. There are some of the hate groups that they have targeted have been Catholic organizations, Baptist organizations, Pentecostal organizations, the American Family Association, and the Family Research Council, both very nice organizations, very conservative, Christian, loving organizations. They are not at all hate groups, I can tell you that. Illinois Family Institute, Parents Action League, United Families International, and so forth. So, yeah, there are several of them that they just lump them all in with everything else, and they expect people to assume, well, they're just as bad as these, you know, the KKK and white nationalists and everything. But it's not true, and that was what this whole lawsuit for this one guy was right here he had a lawsuit against them and I believe that he actually won he sued the center the SPLC agreed to pay him a 3.375 million dollars settlement and issued a public apology so he did win but you know he shouldn't have to do that in the first place anyway this was from March 1st of 2018, and essentially this is from the National Review. This is an article that says the SPLC is a hyperpartisan scam. If you look at this, it says, There was a time when the Southern Poverty Law Center did useful work reporting on actual hate groups, such as the KKK. These days, though, the SPLC is simply a move-on or media matters style outfit. And we've talked many times about media matters on this channel. So if you don't know that, go look for some of my videos. And um, Media Matters, an organization you definitely need to know about. Another one that masquerades as a nonprofit organization, but is hyper-partisan. Boy, it really is. Anyway, this says, its core mission now is trying to marginalize and shut up even mildly right-of-center voices by calling them instruments of hate making increasingly strained attempts to tie conservative commentators, authors, political figures, and professors to the alt-right or neo-Nazism. At the same time, it elevates absurd bloggers to the level of potential leaders of lynch mobs. I mean, it really is. It's crazy. And again, I will leave this down below so you can read about it because they just try to lump everybody in all together. And it's basically anybody they don't like, anybody that doesn't think the same way they do. So I'm going to put all these links down below and I encourage you to go through and read some of these articles because wow, this place, if you've never heard of the SPLC, because they are very influential right now in social media, whether we know it blatantly or it is behind the scenes, it's happening. This is the place, this is the go-to organization that big social media people are going to because they believe they're, they're the ones that can tell who's a hate group and who's not. But we know that they're targeting a lot of conservatives as hate groups just because they disagree with the liberal ideology. So that's what I've got for you tonight. I want to thank you for stopping by and I will see you all later. Bye.